Hello and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Jay Drew, Global Head of Financial Services Ratings. Standard & Poor's is requesting feedback on proposed ratings criteria, which is intended to provide additional insight into the way we rate banks, as well as enhance ratings comparability across sectors. We knew banks were highly levered, had much risk off balance sheet, and that there was a heavy reliance on short-term funding. We also knew that rapid growth often ends in tears. What we saw was that risks were more correlated across traditional silos than we expected, leading to greater concentration. This interconnectedness of the global system led to a turn in the cycle that was rapid and vicious. Capital was not sufficient because record earnings were not retained. Governments pulled out all stops to support their respective banking systems. In proposing this criteria, our objective is to create an integrated, globally consistent framework that builds on what we knew and have seen since the credit crunch began in 2007. Hans Wright, Global Chief Criteria Officer for Financial Institutions, is joining me to discuss some of the key concepts we're proposing in greater detail. Welcome, Hans. Hi, Jay. Can you um, talk a little about um, uh, the framework that we're proposing? Sure. I, yes. I mean, first of all, I mean, I, what we're proposing is uh, through a very detailed document that we've published. It's about 30,000 words, and it's published as a request for comment, which means that it's not final criteria. We're actually just engaging with the market about what our ideas are. Okay. So, so at a high level, the, the framework we're uh, proposing is... Uh, is really three parts, um, and it's revealing more of the building blocks of the rating. So there's still only one rating, but the parts that we would uh, look to produce to, to make it clear is to come up with a standalone credit profile, that's the first step. Then we apply our support framework, okay. thinking about whether support can come from a government or a right. group. And the third step is really to refine the outcome um, using some relative uh, peer analysis to maybe move the rating up one up one or down one notch. I see. Okay. So let's start with the first component then the standalone credit profile. What are some of the factors that you look at? Well first of all the standalone credit profile it's it's some concept that we use across the whole of corporate and government's ratings. Um, and and it, it's not a rating. And to, to underline that uh, fact we use lowercase letters. Um, so within the bank criteria that we're proposing um, there, there are six factors that contribute to the uh, the standalone. Okay. And we start with um, an, an anchor rating. So we, 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 f we find a place that reflects where the bank operates. So we combine the industry and economic risk factors to produce an anchor standalone credit profile. So this is like the starting point. The starting point. For example, it could be A minus. Okay. Um, and then from there, we then uh, look at four further bank specific risks to modify that anchor either up or down to okay. reflect specific risks for the bank. I see. Okay. So the the starting point then really um, would be A minus A, triple B plus, et cetera, and that's like an average bank in that um, uh, market would be rated that? That's right. I mean, the, the, the anchor ratings range from single A down to B minus. I see. And we really leverage our the BICRA methodology, our BICRA criteria, which is our banking industry country risk assessment okay. to give a relative ranking. And it's really reflecting, so where does a bank operate and what would the average rating for a bank operating in those markets be? Right. Okay. Um, so what are these independent or individual factors um, when we look at the standalone credit profile? Right. Th so the bank-specific factors, uh, as I said, there's four of them. Business position, um, capital and earnings, risk position, and finally, liquidity. I see. Okay. So let's let's talk about the business position first. Sure. I mean, I mean, if, just just to sort of reinforce how these these factors do modify the anchor. In testing, only about twenty percent of banks ended up with a standalone that was the same as the anchor. So the the business position itself is, is really thinking on the on the business risk profile side. You know. Uh, reflecting the strengths and weaknesses of different banks operating in that sector. Okay. So we, we would classify banks into one of six categories um, and we call them very strong, have a very strong business position, a strong business position, adequate, moderate, 
weak business position, very weak business okay. position. And th th these, these, these factors um, means that we would add two notches for very strong or one notch for strong, or we would deduct five notches for very weak, uh, one notch for moderate. Example. And so on, okay. And so, okay, so that's the business uh, model. How about capital and earnings? I is it the same approach in terms of how you modify it? Yes, I mean, to try and make it uh, more integrated and simple and consistent, again, for capital and earnings, that we have six categories. Okay. We use the same descriptors. Okay. And it could move the, the, the standalone up two notches, up to two notches, or down by five notches. Okay. And, and what is our view, given that we thought that capital was a weakness, banks have um, um, uh, added to their capital over the last several years. Are we looking, uh, uh, do we have a higher hurdle for what we consider to be acceptable or adequate capital? Um, I, I wouldn't say it's higher hurdle. I mean, I think what we've, we've, we've done over the past year and in these proposals is we've decided we want to calibrate uh, capital to a, a specific consistent stress. So what we've done is we've updated the capital criteria such that an, an, a, uh, we use our risk-adjusted capital framework, the, 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 the rack ratio. Um, a, a rack ratio of 8% means that the bank is able to withstand a, a, a substantial economic stress. Okay. And we'll test all banks consistently, regardless of where they are in the cycle, as to whether they are able to withstand such a stress. I see. Okay. So yes, I mean, I, I, you know, the, the relative to, to uh, where ratios were a few years ago, th they've improved somewhat. And I think it's important that the capital and earnings is focused on a forward-looking view and where we expect earnings to be maintained. Okay. Okay. So what roles, um, uh, what role does earnings play in that analysis? Do you do you look at it separately? Well, er earnings, we believe, is, is appropriately positioned within the capital section. Okay. Uh, earnings are the first line of defence against losses, and is really the source from which capital can grow through retained earnings. Okay. So we've developed a few few new metrics to make sure that. Uh, we're addressing both of those aspects in I the see. capital score. So this is really uh, recognizing that during the good times, even though earnings were at a record high, they were really not retained. So the role of earnings is more about capital generation than just earnings in a vacuum? That's correct, but it's also about balance, balance between growth in capital okay. when your risks are growing as well. Right. So growth means you need more capital right. to stand still. Right, okay. No, that's that's helpful. And uh, the the other two categories, um, um, uh, liquidity as well as risk profile, uh, we've discussed them in great detail in the um, criteria document. We, we actually lay out how we come up with our assessment on each of those categories. But if you can talk a little about what the role risk exposure plays uh, in modifying our view of capital. Sure. I mean, the risk, the risk position factor I is really um, a, a, a qualitative uh, view of, of the risks that the bank is taking. So the capital, earn capital and earnings is very quantitative and driven uh, by applying our risk-adjusted capital framework. And every model has limitations based upon the assumptions that it makes and the data that it's used to input okay. to the model. Right. So by design, we're using the the framework for a consistent global benchmark. But then we ask the question uh, within risk position, is that right for this bank? Does, do, the ba do the bank specific risks, are they adequately reflected in the quantitative okay. framework? So the risk position removes any model risk from the rating um, it's by comparing the, the, the bank specific risks to the, the risk assumptions Good. we've used. Good, that's helpful. Um, Looking at the support framework, we obviously look at the, the parental support as well as potential for extraordinary government support. Can you talk about that? How, uh, how are we looking at that? Sure. Well, so for the government support, um, we, we, we were proposing that we reflect government support in bank ratings throughout the cycle. And we have determined the likelihood uh, that the government will provide future support. And th this results effectively in raising ratings above the standalone by up to three notches. Okay. Um, the group, the group support, clearly is only relevant when the bank is a, 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 a subsidiary, um, and it's determined by the strategic importance of the subsidiary to the group. Okay. 
But of course, the, the, the other factor within the support framework is we want to make sure that the bank ratings are aligned with the sovereign ratings. Right. So um, we, there's a test, a sovereign stress test, and if a bank passes it, we could rate it higher. But um, frankly, in most cases, we won't be rating banks higher, higher than the sovereign. Right. Okay. And, and, the, and the final part of the framework, this relative um, uh, component to that, can you talk about that? Sure. So, I mean, you know, the first two steps is we de do we develop the standalone credit profile, and then we apply the support framework, which produces a what we call a potential issuer credit rating. Mm -hmm. And then this final check is we, we line up a bank to other banks with a similar credit rating, okay. comparing it to those one notch above, one notch below. Uh, and, and we say, you know, is, th is there a reason why we, sh we should rate this bank one notch higher or one notch lower? It could be because of some kind of trend or transition that's that we know is happening that hasn't already been captured elsewhere in the, okay. in the framework or it could be that some of the some key metrics show that one bank is is a, is a particular outperform outperformer or underperformer as long as that hasn't already been reflected as right. well okay okay very good so this request for comment then what 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 are we seeking from the market well we really want the the market to um, to understand what we're proposing think it through and, and give us constructive feedback. Uh, and the whole idea about the request for comment is this is not final criteria. These are our, our ideas and our proposals and we want to have your feedback. And we believe that somebody's going to have some good ideas and we would like to be able to think that through and incorporate it in our final final feedback. So any feedback's good. We've listed seven specific things in the in the document. Okay. So so responses to those would be, would be much appreciated. Okay. Very good. And and how how um, could a reader provide feedback? Um, the best way to provide feedback is to write it down in a written format and email it to our mailbox, which is uh, in the document. It's it's called criteria comments, one word, at standardandpause.com. Okay. Um, Written comments, we have an obligation to formally look through, review, and consider before we finalize the criteria. Of course, we would look forward to uh, discussing and engaging with people throughout the comment period, but uh, written feedback is, is definitely right. the way to Good. go. Good. No, that's very helpful. Thank you, Hans. Um, so I, I wanted to, to put in perspective what we've talked about. So it's a very detailed document that we've put out, as you said, 30,000 words, uh, articulating how we come up with our ratings uh, or how we propose to come up with our ratings. But it builds on existing criteria. Uh, it encompasses incremental criteria changes that we've made over the past several years, including credit stability, uh, confidence sensitivity of certain um, uh, businesses, funding profiles and liquidity, as well as credit stress testing. Uh, it aligns with S&P's general criteria in order to increase comparability by calibrating to Standard & Poor's hypothetical stress scenarios and by embedding credit stability criteria into bank ratings. Uh, so we've, we've tried to capture um, uh, many of the uh, lessons that we've learned over the last several years. Uh, please provide your feedback. Once again, it's criteria comments at standardandpoor's.com. Thank you.